process brand new pergola for us. Um, so today we're going to go through each step by step how we're going to build it. They gave us all the brackets, we have our footings here, we have all the tees, all the corners, and then we also got the kit with all the rafters too. So we're actually going to roof this, but just today we're going to do this main structure portion of it. You see everything here, we're going to build it, you can see our 6x6 six six beams. It's going to be 12 feet in width and then the long side is going to be 16 and a half feet. So we're going to take you step by step each way and go from there. So. We go. What we're doing now is we're going to figure out because all of this concrete is pitching down this way. We're going to use a marker pole and mark using the laser each one. So the goal is we'll use that to figure how much we'll set and cut each post so that it falls properly. So we just we have six posts, three on this side, three on this side. He's going through and marking each individual one. This is good. And then we go. Money. Five, that's good. Six. There you go. All six. And that's it. So we're going to use that to be able to figure out what pitch, because I'm going to throw a gutter on this side over here, and that's going to help water go off because we are eventually going to cover it. So that was D's method. It's going to help us out big time. Lengths, what we did was this is our first post, second, third, fourth, fifth, and then six is over here on the side. I took the difference between one and two, which is an inch. So I wanted to start with eight foot. So then post two needs to be seven foot 11, henceforth then said post three needs to be seven ten. We did them originally, that would have made the thing perfectly flat. So we, but we wanted to add an inch and a half to it because we want front to back to fall an inch and a half. So now that means post four, seven, 11, five, seven, 11 and a half, and then final six both is seven eleven and three quarters that'll give us everything that we need to do to make sure that this guy is pitching this way to be able to get water and uh and rain and anything off of the roof and i'll throw a gutter on that back corner the treated beams they swell a little bit these brackets are a little bit are at, they're at five and a half inches exactly and this is at five and five eighths um so we need to bring it down a little bit so set up a fence on the router you can see I barely have a little bit cut out of it. We're just going to come in. I made a fence for it. fuzzies I can get those out this one was really wet so we'll do that I'll do take it off of this side as well and then that will just slide right on there so it'll be good all right so we've already stood that back wall here we built these on the ground and then lifted up this giant U was probably the heaviest lift and we're trying to minimize lifting at this point so what we did is we stood as you can see I have them temporarily braced uh, Thank goodness Dan brought more two by fours to the fence. It's just temporary support. We built these legs here to be able to hold it up here. We're gonna slide in the T's that go on both those sides. And we also have a post here and post there. And we're just gonna put that in and then we're gonna do the same exact process for the other two posts that we have over here. Uh, it's a little bit different than how it's suggested to be built on the website, but for us, this is gonna work better honestly for us. So um, yeah. All right, so I'm just planning out where I'm going to run our rafters. Um, so it's all two by six. They sit in these little joist hangers. So I've got um, 11 feet between each inside of the posts. Divided that by nine because I had eight rafters. I was right around 14 and 5 eighths, a little bit more. Um, but I'm just gonna 
plan those out, draw them on each side, and then I need to cut my width a little bit, maybe an eighth inch off each side to make the cut itself quarter inch weak so that they fit right in. Um, and then those will just sit on top of it, they screw in. It's in as simple as that. So I'm just gonna plan that out for both sides and we'll be ready to roll. Two by six rafters, these brackets just fit on top. They just, they're a little snug because we're using treated wood instead of cedar. So follow me over here, this is what we're doing. Watch out. So then we just take these up here. I already have my rafters marked where I need them to go. just fit right up on there. Oh, right here. So then after I do that, what I will do is anchor this side first. And if I need to tap any of the metal to go jam up against that wood a little bit more snug, then I'll just tie everything in. But yeah, it's as simple as that. Makes putting a roof on this much easier. Hello, we are plumbing up all the all the pillars and then we've got bracing 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 so we're bracing it up for josh to get all these joists in uh, we're holding off on anchoring the, the, the bases until we get this thing all squared up we're using multiple braces we've got braces off the ground braces over in this corner we'll use one big more one more cross brace on the back once it's all cross braced, it's all braced up. He can continue to run his rafters and we'll fit, put all the final screws in at that point. Cause right now we only put one screw in at one point so it doesn't separate. So once we get it all plumbed up, we get it squared up. Then he can run all his final screws in. So we'll anchor the base and he's ready for rafters. So today's an easier day. We're not lifting anything heavy. <laughs> Our rafters to make sure that the crown is facing up. They're all pretty straight, but I like this. So I'll just X that. All my rafters are 87 and a quarter in length. So all we're gonna do is mark that. And then I'm just gonna chop that off. these are you can see it's almost like a joist hanger so you just slip that in this tab hangs on to the six by six so you can see how these just fit nicely onto here and if they're not agreeable like this one's pretty easy I'll just tap that in usually one end is good and one end's not yes yeah, so this one I'll have to tap in a little bit harder but it's as simple as really Take a piece of block. Let's see. There we go. That's pretty much it. We'll do it for the other side. And the reason why they're so tight is really just because we're using a treated lumber. This one. That's our rafter. We're gonna walk over here. I already have everything marked up on my roof. How I did that was I have an 11 foot gap between each inside of the cedar beam. Divide that by nine, because we want eight rafters. Came out to be right around my 14 to five eighths, a little bit stronger than that. 
and those just sit right in there. And I'm waiting to anchor anything, just putting it up in place because he's still working on plumbing it. That's all it is. Time to anchor it down. We're using our hammer drill, using these tap cons here. It's a 3 8 inch. I think these are 3 inch long. So I'll just put that right there. Took a little piece of cardboard to protect it while we plunge. I'm just going to get it out here. Impact with a socket head on there. There you go. I have all my rafters up here. They're just sitting up here. Nothing's really attached yet. So you can see how I marked my centers, my center location. What I'm going to do is I'm going to pull them as tight as possible to this side throw my screws in and then I'm gonna go over there and make sure they're all nice and snug to that beam and really just tap all their uh, screw all these down with the stainless screws that came with it they hold really nicely this will add a lot of rigidity to it and then also you can see how I'm gonna attach my sheathing to it as well so really excited about this so the temperature switched up pretty quick here we're from 86 last week to about 40s at night so uh, we got some mums and some pumpkins to take our photos and uh, man, we're really happy with this. I think I am gonna end up actually throwing a roof on this uh, next spring, depending upon schedules and how the weather goes. I'd like to be able to get back inside and then have a fun project I'm looking forward to to get us out of the house to start next spring. So we are absolutely in love with this. We've been sitting out here drinking coffee, having cocktails together already. That combined with the fire pit area back here, it's just been so nice and uh, we are blessed loving this little backyard so takes a lot of time but we've made it our own that's for sure